Hello everybody and welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on microelectronics devices to circuits. In our previous uh, interactions, we have actually looked into BJT as an inverter and we have understood how BJT's inverter can be made uh, using a simple common emitter or uh, emitter grounded uh, BJT. Uh, we also seen that uh, the noise margins are not equal. So, basically NML and NMH uh, are not equal right and therefore, uh, though it though therefore, a BJT will be a good um, uh, uh, good uh, acceptor of 1, it might not be very good acceptor of 0 or receptor of 0 right. So, if, if your low noise margins are typically very low, then even a small noise uh, when you are inserting 0 uh, will result in a change in the value of your output voltage. And that is the problem area of a BJT that your noise margins are relatively not very high and therefore, uh, you, you generally get a noisy reception in the output side. Uh, so first thing, the second thing is that typically as I discussed with you, uh, since you have to, uh, if you want to use it as a switch, you have to move from saturation to cutoff and vice versa and therefore, removal of charge carriers from saturation uh, will take some finite amount of time right and therefore, the, the, the time taken to switch from cutoff to saturation and back to cutoff, uh, there is a finite time and therefore, uh, you will always have a limitation at which the BJT can work in terms of frequency limitations. Uh, what we will be now looking is basically into bipolar technologies uh, second order effects, which means that uh, the first order effects were primarily the drift diffusion phenomena which the bipolar technology works and uh, we have also seen the current equation there. We will be now looking at some second order effects, which means that those effects which generally do not rise as such, but may become prevalent under certain conditions right. So, under, under certain conditions they might uh, show their influence on the current voltage characteristics of the device. Otherwise, they are quite silent and they do not, uh, they are not so much receptive to variations. So, what we will be looking therefore, is one is the drift in the base region and uh, what people have done and I will just like to show you what we have done here is that if you look at this equation I n x uh, which is this one right this one the first part this, so this is the total current because of the charge carriers which is there in the region. So, I have got p n transistor right and within that as I discussed with you the p region. So, I have got n p n n has got the largest doping highest area p has got the minimum doping and minimum area and n has got the uh, or collector has got the uh, relatively moderate doping. So, so what I am trying to tell you is that from this point let us suppose this accounts to x equals to 0 to this point which accounts x equals to say x x n then we know that the very how, how, how is the electron profile which is basically the majority current carrier in the p type base uh, varies. Right. So, this is what I wanted to discuss with you in this case. So, if you go back to this slide, uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can see that, that so if you look at this figure 3 which you see, this is basically known as a graded doping and you can see here that what we try to do is that we first make an acceptor grading. So, uh, acceptor background is there. So, this background is basically acceptor which means that all of it is basically made as p type first of all. Right. We make it all p type right the whole of it we make it as uh, as p type and then what we do is that we then dope it with uh, uh, so we, we, with donor atoms. So, this is the donor atom which we are doping with and then we ensure that the donor atoms exceed the acceptor atom at certain regions which is between this point and this point and therefore, these two points are basically the edge of the base. So, this is my base for a p plus for a p plus n p uh, BJT, uh, since your N D is larger than N A at this point and at this point right. So, they are they are larger in the sense that they are more more in the more in value. So, I would expect to see a larger dope larger donor concentration and therefore, this will become more N type as compared to P and that is the reason you get P type here. In this region of course, N A is therefore, larger than N D N D and therefore, this is basically your p, p type. 
since it is very very large as you can see it is quite large as compared to nd we refer to this as a p plus region because the doping is very very high right similarly when you reach to this side your your acceptor ion, your your uh, dopant uh, nd the donor ion actually reduces much below the value of your acceptor ion concentration and as a result this becomes a p type so i got a p plus np so how do you do it this is also known as a graded junction uh, a graded junction uh, doping or a graded doping profile and uh, what we do here is therefore in a graded doping profile we very we can we can control the width of my base as well as of the emitter as well as the collector by simply changing the uh, the the dopant profile right so the doping profile right that is very simple and easy to do action uh, you can also change the doping for example if you wanted to make this one more p plus type so you want to make it p plus plus then you simply increase the acceptor ion concentration in this manner you wanted to shift this line from this side to this side then you need to cut somewhere here so when you cut the na here uh, the starting value comes out here so i can do all sorts of manipulation and I, I am able to achieve a very straightforward um, methodology of having p plus n. Now, let us suppose your electrons are the majority current carrier, uh, holes are the majority current carriers. Therefore, electrons which are there are basically your minority current carriers. What we are assuming is that, uh, that let, let us suppose the effective, effective charge carrier at a particular place is nothing but N d minus N a. Right. So, you, you had N d let us suppose 10 to the power 15 and N a N d was 10 to the power 19 and N a was 10 to the power 15 or 16. Then you subtract both of them and that is the effective N a or the effective number of dopant species. So, if we have 100 percent ionization, I would expect to see that that many number of free charge carriers. If N d is greater than N a, free charge carriers electrons. If N a is greater than N d, free charge carriers as whole will be of, of course, available to you. Now, to understand this, let us suppose uh, I have electrons as the majority current carriers, then I define the current I n at any point x n within the circuitry within the B j t. So, this is the value. So, this is the x variation, this is the x variation is equals to q times a q a mu n into n x n into e x n. I will explain to you what these terms are. N is the charge density or the dopant charge density which you see e is the electric field. Uh, from uh, from base to the from the emitter to the base region E electric field at that particular point Q is the electronic charge A is the area of the cross section of the emitter or the base and mu n is basically the mobility of the charge carriers right. So, this is basically uh, by virtue of your uh, sort of a drift uh, drift current which you see right. Similarly, you will you will add the, you will also add a current which is by virtue of diffusion because uh, because please understand that the doping within the base region is not fixed right it varies because as you can see here nd is varying like this so i would expect to see that at zero width at zero at, or, or, or at when, when the base starts the doping concentration is maximum and then it starts to fall down in this fashion right and that's what is shown here that i have got maximum width here maximum number of doping concentration and then it starts to fall down as we move from the edge of the base to the edge of the emitter to the edge of the collector. And therefore, we have a diffusion term which is given as q a d n d n x d x n which means that it is the charge again a is the area right d is the diffusion constant for electron or a diffusion const, diffusion coefficient for electron and d n x d x n basically meaning the number how the number of charge carriers are varying within, 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 the, within this point. Now, please understand if the doping concentration within the base side would have been constant my this term would have been equals to 0. Constant means independent of the distance uh, the doping is always fixed. So, if it is 0 the only contribution would not have would have been only from the uh, drift component and not from the diffusion component and all of you can therefore understand that therefore uh, obviously the drift component will have uh, uh, always a component which is primarily proportional to the area as well as to the effective number of charge carriers or number of charge doping species in, the, in that particular point. Similarly, from Einstein's equation or from otherwise we can find out that E of x n means electric field at any particular point x n is given by this formula the same formula which we get right and we can from there we can get the value so, which is very simple and straightforward from this equation only from this equation only I can get this very easily right uh, provided you make the drift current equals to 0 then I get d n by mu n d n by mu n into 1 by n x d x n is equal to minus k t by q right 
1 by Lx and dnx and because why it is kt by q because d by mu n d by mu n is equals to kt by q kt by q is constant at 300 kelvin approximately 26 millivolt to 25 millivolt so d by mu n is always a constant quantity right at 300 kelvin it's a constant quantity and therefore we can safely write down this d by mu n to be a constant and that is equal to minus kt by q, minus k, equals to minus kt by q upon 1 by nxn dnx and uh, uh, dx therefore uh, the total electric field at any particular point exn will be a strong function of how the diffusion species is varying with respect to space right that is very important which you see here it will also depend upon the number of dopant species available at a particular point xn within the network if that is very large the electric field the, the, the absolute value of electric field will will be will be fall right will, will be falling down so we have understood therefore uh, there is that in the in the base region if there is a small amount of change in the value of nd i will have other drift in the base region therefore there will be a drift carrier uh, there will be a drift uh, electron will be drifted through the base region right and that is quite uh, quite an interesting phenomena which people see so as you can see there is a fairly a sharp discontinuity in the doping profile right your doping profile shows a sharp discontinuity which means that uh, uh, since the doping and the reason being that uh, uh, since there is this, this, this sudden change at the interface between nd and na right and therefore there is a sharp change uh, so as you can see the donor concentration in the base region becomes smaller than the constant p type background doping in the connector that we have already discussed in our previous uh, previous slide we have already discussed that the donor concentration in the base region right so if you remember the previous discussion was sorry the previous discussion if you look this is p plus n p right it is this is p plus n and p so what i'm trying to tell you that the donor concentration in the base region becomes smaller as compared to the collector concentration on the on the on the collector side so on the collector side you still have p but on the base side since donor is slightly higher you get n, n, n region available to you and as you can see emitted is heavily doped shallow region it is a heavily, heavily doped region why because the acceptor concentration is much much larger as compared to the donor concentration there now the net doping concentration n d minus n a uh, varies along a profile which decreases from emitter edge to the collector edge this we again discussed the why the, and the reason being very simple that uh, if you look very carefully the n d is falling from this edge to this edge right and since it is n d minus n a right so since n a is constant at at this stage i would expect that the profiling here will also be between this point and this point right parallel to this line right fine and that is what you get that it is varying it is maximum at the emitter edge and minimum at the collector edge right uh, doping distribution in the base uh, is basically can be simulated using gaussian uh, gaussian functions or gaussian doping concentrations something looks like this it's not an inverted inverted dumbbell shape uh, doping profile the idea here is this is known as so if this is maximum right and this is say this is say this is x then this is approximately x by 2 and we define this width right we define this width this width as full width at half maxima right so we define full width at half maxima fwhm right now if you if you make it fw so this is basically the the distance and this is the do, doping concentration so this is nd and this is the x right so this is minus x plus x zero so zero you have the highest doping and as you move from highest doping to left and right it falls down now if you want to make the doping very very sharp you just have to make your fwhm very small right you have to make your FW. if you want to make the doping uh, very constant doping to something do something like this spread out right spread out and then your fwhm becomes large so what is the advantage of a gaussian profile the advantage of a gaussian profile is that it helps you to give a profile uh, or it, it it helps you to control the profile from maybe a constant profile constant doping profile to a sharp peak profile 
by simply changing the value of your FWHM or full width at half maximum also referred to as sigma in most of the cases right sigma in most of the cases and that is what you refer to as a standard deviation but technically it is full full width at half maximum and therefore you can see that automatically what you get from here is that simply by changing the value of FWHM either you can reach a peak value of doping concentration or you can actually reduce the doping concentration drastically right and so on and so forth. So, this is what uh, the, what we get the area under this curve is basically the total number of dopant species total number of dopant species dopant or acceptor whatever you want to do right. So, that is the reason Gaussian profile is most preferred profile in a, in a design because you can control it very in a much in a much better manner. So, due to a graded base region a built in electric field exists from emitter to collector. Uh, thereby adding a drift component to the transport of holes across the base. This is very very important, right? So you see what what, what I was talking about in the previous case. In the previous case, that what is happening is, uh, if you just look at it, that because of the graded base region, there's an electric field from emitter to collector, right? F for a PNP, right? And therefore. Uh, so, if there is a if, if, if there is an electric field for example, from this direction to this direction. So, if you have holes entering the base region they will that will be always drifted by the strong electric field towards the collector side right and th that is the reason it drift in the base region right. So, that is the reason what we get. So, so advantage of it is that you get a larger number of charge carriers on the bay on the collector side because of this drift in the base region right. We come to the next uh, uh, next. Uh, a second order effect and that is basically known as early effect or what is also known as base width the modulation effect. Uh, we have already studied this, but I will just go it a bit fast in this case, so that you understand the issues in a much more detailed manner. Uh, base width narrowing effect or early effect is to do with what that if you remember uh, your base is lightly doped as I uh, as I have written here this is lightly doped and your uh, what happens is that that if your base is lightly doped. So, I have got emitter base and emitter uh, sorry this is emitter base and collector. So, emitter base junction will have a depletion region like this and collector base will have something like this. But uh, as I have told you previously also that the depletion thickness will be larger towards that region whose uh, doping concentration is low right. So, what I am trying to tell you therefore, is that if I have a PN junction or, or maybe an NPN transistor which is a BJT and let us suppose this is emitter base collector and since, ba since base is relatively low, lowly doped I would expect to see the doping concentration something like this. So, you will have like this they are not equal similarly this will have like this and you will have like this, but since emitter base junction will be forward biased. So, this total distance will be smaller than this total distance clear. So, what is the effective base width now is this much this is the effective weight base width where doping is there otherwise these are all uh, fixed charge carriers these are all fixed charge fixed charge. This is the only place where you have a mobile charge mobile charge and those are holes and those are holes and these are fixed charge here. So, so, so basically they do not contribute to the overall current. Now, as I discussed with you when you are active forward mode your base collector is always reversed bias right. So, when you reverse bias it that means if this is if this is n p n let us suppose if you reverse bias it then this will be something like this right. So, when you once you reverse bias it this depletion thickness will further increase as we had discussed earlier that means reverse bias will increase the depletion thickness. So, the effective depletion thickness increases this side. So, what happens to the effective base width? What happens to your effective base width? It reduces actually if you see very clear, 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 clearly. So, your effective base width now becomes this much fine it has reduced. When it is reduced uh, so, this is basically known as therefore, base width reduction or effective effective base width reduction. So, once it reduces now you have lesser number of carriers in the base region uh, and therefore, 
the electrons moving from emitted to the base side the recombination will be smaller and larger number of electrons will be reaching to the collector side and you will be reaching a very large value of alpha very close to 1 which is 0 0.99 maybe right and if your this base region would have been quite thick uh, your recombination would have been higher and the collector current would have been much smaller as compared to your emitter current. So, with this fundamental understanding we just now come to the so the depletion thickness at the reverse collector junction can be extended significantly into the entire base region we have discussed this point and the decrease in the base weight causes beta to increase and alpha to increase uh, as well hence the collector current increases with collector voltage right so so what do we please understand till now uh, we were uh, we were assuming that the collector current is always constant independent of the value of vcb but now uh, what what we are what we are seeing is since now beyond a particular higher value of vcb your effective base width is reducing i would expect to see an increase in the current so that's what we are seeing also so as you can see here the current is increasing it is saturating so if if, if there wouldn't have been an early effect it wouldn't have been something like this right it would have been something like this constant but then what is happening at a higher value of vcb vce or vcb your your this profiling is becoming high right which means that what is happening is that this value is becoming high and therefore ic becomes becomes large now the way how to find out the voltage at which this happen is that if you back it all of you extrapolated or interpolated backwards interpolated backwards all the line the place at where it meets is defined as by early voltage early voltage right early, this is known as early voltage right and early voltage therefore is that voltage at which uh, they will start behaving like a uh, fixed current current source right and this is what the value of current is let me come to the third uh, uh, second order effect and that is the avalanche breakdown and i think it, it is very simple and straightforward uh, avalanche breakdown is remember uh, your base collector is always reversed bias right we had been talking about for this long time that base collector will be always reversed bias so when the base collector is reversed bias for so you will have minority current carriers whole holes here holes here and you will have electrons as the minority current carriers here right now when you reverse by it, bias it electrons from n type and holes from p type won't be able to move because the depletion thickness is very large but for the minority current carriers which is hole on the n side and uh, electrons on the p side it is more of a hill it's going down it's not a uphill it's a downhill right so therefore i will expect to see a large amount of current because of minority current carrier but since the number of charge carrier minority current carriers are very very low therefore the charge associated with it or the current associated with it will be very 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 small yes it will be small of course but let us see what what happens now this when once they once they start moving once they start moving so i have this junction this is emitter base junction and i have got n p n and electrons are available here and holes are available here right so so the electric field internally which is there in the depletion region uh, between p and n because it is reverse bias so i have a depletion region here i have a depletion region here right and i would expect so the, the internal electric field will be from this side to this side so any hole uh, any electron trying to enter from this side to this side electron is a majority current carrier in n type will be forced to go this side similarly any hole entering from this side to this side will be again forced to go this side so any majority current carrier contribution will be al almost zero anything which will coming will be directly coming from emitter but for these holes and electrons which are minority current carriers in collector and base respectively if, if the hole enters here it will be dragged by this electric field within the depletion region to reach this point so if the now if you go on increasing the value of your uh, reverse bias collector junction right if you go on increasing it drastically so the, these electrons and holes will gain large amount of energy and when they pass through this depletion region they will ionize and form electron and hole pairs so what will happen is beyond a particular point you might have a suddenly large increase in the value of electron right and that is what is known as a avalanche breakdown that due to this sudden electron charge you will have a large electron current and therefore if you plot ic versus vcb it is this constant we have discussed this point constant current 
but be, as you go on making it more and more negative biased and make it larger suddenly a time comes when the current suddenly increases almost drastically like this and the reason is that you now have large amount of ionization and large amount of electron hole pair formation because of which there is a large current available to you right uh, these are pri primarily uh, electron hole pair formation which take place you can also have another thing that electrons become move very fast and they ionize the atom so the exterior most electron from the kinetic is so the kinetic energy of the incident electron is so large that it directs its all energy to this peripheral atom uh, electron and the electron comes out of the atom right and it becomes a free electron in any case you will have a very large a quantity of free electrons which will be available and therefore, you could expect to see a sudden increase in the current. This breakdown voltage is defined as VCBO when it is a common base configuration also referred as BCEO, BV suffix CEO when it is a common emitter configuration uh, which is there right. So, we have these two types of uh, configurations available. Uh, this is the net current which one sees. Uh, because of the multiplication factor because of m m is the multiplication factor primarily meanings that for each ionization how many number of electrons are formed. So, if one electron comes and form 4 electrons then the multiplication factor m is equals to 4 right and you will have 4, four number times of uh, of um, electrons and uh, electrons and whole currents available right. So, with this uh, we have understood the basic 3 mechanisms basic 3 mechanisms of 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 uh, breakdown. Uh, when we meet next time, we will be actually looking into the next 2 mechanisms and second order effects. As you can see therefore, these are special cases as I discussed with you. Why special? Because only and only and only when, when your collector base or base collector junction becomes larger than this breakdown voltage, then only you will expect to see a very large increase in the current. Otherwise, the current will be almost constant or remain as it is. So, therefore, these effects are known as second order effects. What we have learned avalanche breakdown we have learned one. We have also learned uh, uh, your drift of charge carriers within the within the base region a second order effect and we have also learned about the early effect or effective base width modulation. When we meet next time we will be actually looking into the other facts as far as uh, this uh, dimension goes and we will see uh, what are the other facts we will look in thermal effects and we will be looking into the base resistor or emitter crowding effect. So, these two effects we will look and that will ensure that we will be finishing off BJT with the understanding of these few uh, fundamental things. Thank you very much.